hey guys, I want to show you something that I found today that's been troubling me for many years because I never understood it until today. All of us have been studying Jesus's word, trying to understand what he's been saying. And in Matthew chapter 24, when he, Jesus, is sitting upon the Mount of Olives, sitting down with his disciples in private, they ask him a very important question. They ask him, when is he going to be coming back? When is he coming back? And when will the end of the world be? And Jesus tells them, you know, be careful that you're not deceived because many are going to come in my name. You know, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to trick us. So there's going to be people that say that they're God, say that they're Jesus, but they're not. We're going to hear of wars. We're going to hear of rumors of wars. We're going to see nation rise up against nation, kingdom against kingdom. We're going to see famines. We're going to see sickness. We're going to see earthquake in many, many places. And Jesus says, they're all the beginnings of the sorrows. And then it says, there's going to be persecution. They're going to, these Israelites are going to be afflicted and killed. And they're going to be hated for his name's sake. So they're going to be targeted and hated for the name of Jesus. Anyone that believes in Jesus in the end days, you are not going to be um, popular. So he's talking here to the Israelites about what's going to happen to them. But in these sort of contexts, we can take that in the Christians as well because we are the ones that are the church of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ. So we're not going to be, you know, in these end times, we're not going to be popular anymore. No one's going to, you know, want to go to church on the corner because they're going to be persecuted. It says many are going to be offended. People are going to start hating each other, betraying one another. There's going to be false prophets coming around and deceiving people into believing in false Christ, into new age, into all sorts of things. And it says, because iniquity shall abound, it says the love of many shall wax cold. So people are going to lose love for one another. It's going to become a cold and dark place. But he says to the Israelites that endure and to the end, the same they shall be saved. Okay, so he's literally what he's telling these these Israelites, his disciples, his people comes to pass when he tells us all again as the body of Christ, the churches in the book of Revelation. So I'm going to get to that in one minute. Okay, so it says then also, so we can tick all these boxes and then the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all the nations and then shall come the end. Okay, so we can tick that. We are now officially given the gospel of the kingdom. So the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those books that are the testimony of Jesus Christ and what he did to save the world have now been preached into the whole entire world. So all of these things have to come to pass and they all have. So we can tick all those off. They're all happened and happening. And then he says, then sh therefore shall the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth this, this, whosoever readeth, let him understand. And then Jesus goes on to tell the people, the Israelites in Judea, what they need to do. And that's the instructions for a very time, I believe, soon in the future for the, for the Israelites that are in Judea. It says, let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Okay. The reason we don't have to flee into the mountains, guys, is because we've been caught up in the throne, to the throne of God by now. And I'll show you that in a minute when I show you the comparison of this scripture in Revelation 12. What I'm getting to, and this is what I've highlighted in green that I did not understand until today, and I'm going to show you. So he says to the people in Judea, to flee to the mountains. But then he says, let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. That's strange. I don't understand that. But wait, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Okay, so now I'm going to take you to Revelation 12, 14 to show you 
the prophecy that Jesus gives the churches in Revelation and all those that believe on his name to understand what he meant here in Matthew chapter 24, verse 17. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Okay. Now, when we read the prophecy, the Revelation 12 sign, and what happens in the end times, which God, when Jesus was talking about in Matthew 24, 7, it says in 14, and to the woman who is Israel were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place. So she flies into the wilderness for three and a half years where she's nourished for a time and a times and half a time from the face of the serpent. So in Revelation 12, the serpent, the devil, who is Satan, is cast down out of heaven into the earth with his angels after a war breaks out in heaven with God and his angels. And he is cast down and he is so angry he is waiting to devour the child that is soon to be born, which is the church, which is the body of Christ, which is the rapture. Okay, so Revelation chapter 12, 5, and she brought forth a man child. So that's Israel that gave birth to the church that gave us the gospel of Jesus. Remember the gospel, the books uh, that we have today came from the Israelites, came from God's chosen elect. And that's how we became the church. And she brought forth a man child <clears throat> who was to rule all nations, <clears throat> excuse me, with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And just to reiterate that we, the churches, are those that are caught up to God to rule and reign with a rod of iron. We go to Revelation 2. And he's talking to the churches. Here we go. It says to those, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter. Shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Okay, so to those who... Do what Jesus said and what Jesus said as his greatest commandments was to love God with all your heart, mind and soul, and love one another and to endure it to the end and keep the faith. Okay. So to those people that are overcoming because they believe that Jesus fulfilled and overcame for them. Okay. We believe that Jesus paid our price in full by his precious blood being shed and the pain and the sacrifice on that cross. By the Father God the fa and the, the Son God and the Holy Spirit God to us to give us forgiveness and coverage and to pay our sin debt so that we can be taken up out of this place when Jesus returns, okay? So those of us that overcome will rule and reign with Christ. As he says again here, re reiterates, and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And that is his father's house where we have been promised. But the whole point of this video, back to this, the prophecy or the information, because Jesus knew the end from the beginning because he is God. Only, only God knows this. And so he tells his disciples who ask him privately on the Mount of Olives, what are going to be the signs of your return or your coming, okay, and the end of the world? And here it is. He gives them the sign and he says in Matthew 24, 17, those that are in, well, Matthew 6, sorry, Matthew 24, 16 says that those that are in Judea to flee to the mountains. And then 17 says those that are on the housetops in Judea, obviously, do not come down. And then it says that the women, the woman who is Israel is these peoples were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place. 
and it says she's nourished. She's supernaturally protected by the wrath of Satan for three and a half years. The dragon is so angry that he, Satan, goes into all the world, as you will read on in chapter 13, and takes over the whole world. He sets himself up in the temple, as it's written in Matthew 24, and claims to be God and forces everybody here in Revelation 13, forces them all, all of them, even the children, to take the mark, his mark, and to worship him. And anyone who refuses will be beheaded. But the Israelites who have been protected supernaturally in this time, there's 144,000 of them. Tribulation saints, 144,000 Israelites walking the earth. In those days, there's also two great, two, uh, two witnesses, supernatural witnesses that are given powers from God to do miraculous things that are sent in the last seven years to the dying world for the final harvest, the last of the last of the last chance to come to Jesus. But in this scary time in the Great Tribulation, you could possibly lose your life. And if you make it to the end, my goodness, I don't know who's going to make it to the end. I don't know. I know that the Israelites will make it to the end because they're supernaturally protected. But for the rest of the world, all the unbelievers that are left behind, some of them will come to know the truth of Jesus in the end and they shall be saved. But many others will take the mark of the beast and go into the fires with, with Satan. Hell, hell was, and, and the lake of fire was made for the disobedient angels like Satan and his angels. It wasn't meant for us. But sadly, those that are marked by the beast belong to the beast, who is Satan, and he, they will go with him. As his children, the devil's children will go into the fire. God's children will go into the light, will go into his kingdom. So I pray, I really do, that if you've watched this video to the end and you're listening out there, that you trust Jesus today. The Bible says you don't need to read to be saved. You need to hear the word to be saved. That's how you get faith. You hear us talking about Jesus and what he's done for all of us and how much love that he has for us. You believe that, you receive that gift of free life, eternal life, of forgiveness of sin, the blood of Christ. And that's how we overcome this evil world and this evil devil that's coming upon the place. By Jesus, he does it for us and he also takes us out. He says to us, Pray yourselves worthy to escape all these things that are about to come on the world. And when I'm, we've read the scriptures, we know the gospel. The only way we're worthy is by Christ. He imputes his righteousness or his worthiness onto us. So for we receive that and believe that, therefore we are saved. And we do become new people in Christ because the Holy Spirit dwells in us and helps us, assists us to make us new creatures. And God loved the world so much that he wants every single one of us to be saved. There's nothing too bad you could have done that he can't forgive you of and you can't repent of and you can't come to God. The time is now because if this isn't just a sign and this is it and this is like go time, you don't have long. And please don't be left behind in great tribulation to suffer the wrath of the beasts and the hatred of Satan that he has for, for the people, for all of us. Come with us now. Be rescued, be born again, and be part of an eternal kingdom where you rule and reign with Christ in his kingdom. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for giving us life. And please, please, please come soon to take us away.